Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary in Northboro. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. And we're doing these shows. I started doing these shows to really help you here in Northboro kind of acquaint yourselves with the people and programs that you, like my friends Frank and Mary, uh, who live in Northboro, I bet you didn't know that, need to know about in order for them to be able to stay in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard, which is Frank and Mary's goal. So all of the people and the programs you need to know about as a senior to help you live a better life in Northboro. And because Kel my friend Kelly Burke from the Senior Center knows all of those people, she is my co-host for this show and also invites all the guests <laughs> and has a terrific <laughs> guest for you today and really uh, appropriate guest given the fact that it's on October and it is, what is it called? Open, Subscri enro open, open enrollment. enrollment season yes. for, at Medicare. So Kelly. Yes, well I'm, I'm very happy to be here Arthur and I'm, I'm thrilled that Sue Goldner who is our Shine Counselor is able to join us today because she is fully into Medicare open enrollment right now at the Senior <laughs> Center. We have two Shine counselors, yeah. um, Pauline O'Bray and Sue. So yeah. we're very fortunate and um, I'm anxious for people to learn more about Shine through Sue. And, the, and these are volunteer positions, right? This yes, is, they are. They're these all, are good citizen positions. Right. They're all volunteer positions. Uh, we don't have any affiliation with any of the drug companies, right. with any of the medical plans. It's all volunteer. It's all unbiased. Right. You're not getting a commission. There's no You're commission. You're not getting paid. <laughs> Right, there's no, no nope. secret person behind the screen. So no. can you tell us how you came to be willing to do this, which is really wonderful. Well, yeah. I retired uh, several years ago, yeah. and I wanted to do something to give back to the community, to do some type of volunteer work that I felt that I could help maybe someone, you know. And so I looked right. at several different options for uh, volunteers. And no, I, I, I'm curious, what did you do before? I retired from General Dynamics as oh. the Director of Ethics. And you were there for a while? Almost 30 years. For almost, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so once uh, I retired... And you wanted to do something I did. I wanted enough. to give something back. Um, it's something that's always been in my family that you give back. Yep. That, you know, if you've been fortunate enough to have a really good life, then you have the opportunity to give back. You give back. Right. So I read an article in the local paper that they were looking for volunteers for the SHINE program. Yep. So I investigated that and uh, was accepted into the training program. Yep. Once the training program was completed, you have to um, take a certification, which is done yearly. And by the way, can you just tell me about the training program? Because I always hear that Shine mm -hmm. Councils are trained, but I never kind of... Well, you have I don't to. Need to be at, I don't, <laughs> you probably know all of this stuff, but I think this is really interesting. It's so. great well, you yeah. really have to understand what Medicare is, um, what the different parts are for Medicare. Yeah. There's really four parts to Medicare. Uh, Medicare A is for your hospitalization, Medicare B is for your doctor's visits, your lab work, your physical therapy. Um, and then Medicare A and B only pay 80% of your cost. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will look to pick up a supplement insurance, which will help to pay the difference of the 20%. So you have Medigap plans, which are private plans. Uh, you also have Medicare Advantage plans, which are supplement supplemented by Medicare. Mm -hmm. And those plans have drug plans with them. Um, because they're supplemented, they're less expensive than the private plans through mm -hmm. Medigap. But there's a lot of pros and cons on why you would pick one over the other one. And that's one of the things that they'll help train you on is to understand all of the different programs that are available. Yeah. Um, you have to understand um, people who may qualify for uh, mass health assistance. Mm -hmm. They may call, qualify for a prescription advantage. Um, through Social Security, they have a program called Extra Help. So it's, it's kind of the job to learn everything about the different systems and where to go to to get information and how to help people understand uh, what the process is and yep. what they need to do to become Medicare <laughs> friendly. So that's a ton of training. <laughs> that's, that's a, a lot, lot of training. It's, 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 it's really lot. outstanding that, yeah. that mm -hmm. there's so many people that, that become Shine Counselors and, and do all that training. It's, it takes, the training course 
usually goes about six to eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then, like I said, you have to be certified after that. And then there's a monthly meeting that you you should go to in order to keep up. And they always have speakers at these meetings. Yeah. So anything new that's coming out, they can tell us what's happening with Mass Health, with Prescription Advantage, with um, changes in insurance plans. So. Uh, it's it's pretty busy, and you you have to be willing to give a lot, because it's mm -hmm. uh, it takes time. And it doesn't stop. You have to keep getting recertified. Right, right? every year it, you have to. Because the game keeps changing. That's mm -hmm. right. So, you so, so this is so it's October, and and I think a lot of people associate this time mm -hmm. because they they in, 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 it, typically they're thinking oh at Medicare I'm on Medicare but. But the thing that's constantly changing is the is the drug program. Yes, it is. So could you we start? Could we really kind of talk about the drug program now? Is 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 enrollment open now for the for the drug program, or is it started? Yes, open enrollment is from October fifteenth to yeah. December seventh, yeah. um, and and you should definitely review your drug plan every year. Uh, make an appointment through your senior center. You can call 1-800-AGE-INFO uh, and they'll connect you to a SHINE uh, counselor or a center that has uh, you know, SHINE counselors at it. So that's a universal number. That's like a, yes, it that's is. all around Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. You just call that number. Yes. 1-800-A-G-E-I-N-F-O. Correct. And I bet that our friends here at this cable station will actually put that on mm -hmm. as a banner. Okay. So it'll probably be near your name as we're talking during this show, mm -hmm. right? So that's a really, that's, that's, that's an important piece. True. It is an important piece because I think sometimes people don't realize that the drug companies change their plan every year and one year they might cover your drug and the next year they don't cover your drug or they put it in a different tier so that maybe you were paying two dollars for it and now they've changed the tier and you're paying ten dollars for it and, and they can do that and how many plans are there out there now about for the drug plans i believe this year we have almost 30. so for just drug plans yeah. and then there's seven um, health insurance plans in the Medigap field and then in the uh, Medicare Advantage plan, those are like HMOs. Yeah. Uh, there's, I believe there's, a, there's seven primary companies and under them they probably each have six or seven different types of, pol of policies. policies that you can, um, you can look at. So can we, can we start off just talking about the, at the drug ones? Sure. So, so how do you figure, like for a person coming in who's saying, mm -hmm. well, you know, how do I figure out? Mm -hmm. How do you figure it out? Because you've right. got a, a ton of plans. Right. Well, how do you even start figuring out how to deal with that? There's, um, you go to Medicare.gov yeah. and there's an online um, system that you can use and it says find a drug plan. Yeah. Um, we ask anybody that comes in to please bring a list of their drugs, all of their medications, oh, um, and then we'll enter them into this system and then go in and it'll pull up all of the plans that are available and it goes from the the best plan and then to the most expensive plan. So you have to look to see um, if the drugs are covered by this plan, whether there's any restrictions on the plan. Um, some drugs uh, you need prior authorization from the doctor before the prescription company will cover this particular drug. drug some of them have um, they make them um, try another drug first, and if that doesn't work, step therapy, that's called. And if that... And typically the other one is probably a generic or something yes. that they're going to try to, to right. see if it works. It's so right. sometimes they'll, they'll try to push people into doing that to, take, to try it to see whether or not they can tolerate it. So once you have all of that information in there, then you can begin to look at the plans. Some people... Um, buy all their drugs through mail order. So it's very important for them that the plan has a mail order capacity. Oh, because some don't? There are a few plans that do not have mail order. So if that's important to you, then that says, okay, so we'll, we don't look at any of those, we eliminate them. Um, some people don't want a deductible. Um, the deductible for 2019 is gonna be around most of them are $415, so that means come January 1st, when your new plan starts, you're going to be hit with a $415 deductible. I see. No matter, so, so it isn't like it's like a percentage of each purchase. No matter what you're buying starting January 1 until you get to the top of the deductible, then the insurance company isn't covering anything. If it has to be a tier three or above for the deductible to kick in. Tier, tier, tier one and tier two are mostly your generic drugs, and those do not 
count as part of your deductible. So it's usually a tier three drug. I see. And, I see. Um, and, and across all of those policies, does everybody agree as to what a tier one and a tier two drug is? No, they don't. Drug it? No? No. They can change that too? <laughs> Each company can determine what tier level they want their drug to be. You could uh, look for, um, just trying to think of one of them, Lestatin, which is a, mm -hmm. and so Aetna said. Like the, the blood pressure, I was thinking right. that as a blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So Aetna says, oh, this is a tier two drug for us and this is gonna cost you $10 a month. Then you could look and you could go to Silverscript and Silverscript says, oh, we keep that as a tier one drug. It'll either cost you zero or a dollar per month. So it can vary from drug plan to drug plan what they charge, and they can do that. There's no ruling against that. So no normal human being could figure this out. <laughs> so so, do, so it's our superhero <laughs> is here to do that, but I think that's the ni yeah. that's the really nice this service is, the message is here. Yeah, that you, you know with with the health plans and with yeah. the with right. the drug plans you have you know somebody like Sue who can lay it out there for you and can and compare those so that you can make an informed decision. And, um, and, and again, you know, they're, they're volunteers, they're unbiased, and, and so you're gonna get great service. And they're there, all, right. yes, and they're there. So can you, can you just talk about, because I wanna get back to the, the advantage and some of the other stuff, can you just talk about what the, what the outreach is at the senior center, or like, do you have a day, is, is, are you always there? Are there, are there actually programs that, how does that work during the season? Because I bet that so, it must come up every year, right? It, it, open enrollment right is now, there every, yeah. every year at the same time. And, but Sue and Pauline are there all year round Sue for and people. And O'Bray is our other shine counselor. I see. And they are there all year long. Now they have more appointments during open enrollment because right. we have more demand for that then. Mm -hmm. um, so it, we are running appointments um, every day. So um, with with one or both of them, so mm -hmm. they'll both be there tomorrow. I see. Um, and so and for that, if they're trying to make an appointment, so wh who do they can, where can do they call, call for they, that? They can call the senior center 508-393-5035 and make yep. their appointment with Sue or. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's another one of those banners that's going to show up, okay? Yeah. Perfect. That's, right. Yeah. That, that, those will always be there. And then, and then, is there any kind of a of a program that just kind of talks about this stuff in general, like a seminar or something that you do? That everybody we have, gets we have yeah. done that in the just past. Wondering. We've done, Pauline um, has helped us out, and Wayne Wertonen, who is a past Shine counselor also yep. from Northboro. Um, a, a, a lot of people need that kind of presentation when they're turning 65, because that's when you mm -hmm. join into the Medicare. Um, right. The world, plans. yes, the, the world, the world of, of Medicare. The world of yes. Medicare. Just to have people start um, and so figuring that, it out. That's been very helpful. You know, yeah. there's, a, you know, we've talked about it a lot, Arthur. It's uh, those baby boomers are the highest um, population group. That's us. Mm -hmm. Us. Us. Yep. That's We're right. part of it. That's a pretty amazing and, thing. And of course, there's a lot of people that are turning 65 and and need to know more about Medicare. So we've done that as well. Um, but that that if somebody is interested in yeah. more information about that, be, three months before their yes. birthday, they should be um, calling for an appointment with a Shine counselor. Right. Because e even before they get on Medicare, because right. the first one must be the worst one when you're first doing it. Right. You just, what mm -hmm. is this stuff about? You know. I think it's just really overwhelming because a lot of times people will assume when they retire at 65 that they might have had group health insurance. For the company they worked for, well, now they come in and they're turning 65, but their wife is or husband is already over 65. So now you both have to go on to Medicare. Um, and there's single plans. There's no longer group family plans. So sometimes people say, oh, we can't have the same insurance. I said, well, you can have the same health insurance, but your drug plans will differ mm -hmm. depending on what type of medication you take. But the Right. And they're not, I hadn't even thought of that. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm old, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to be 69 in January, and my wife mm -hmm. turns 60. Oh, I won't check. That's my right. wife is a That's few years younger than me. Problems, yes. Yes. We're not going to go there, right? <laughs> but the, but the fact that that we've each got to be on our own, because right now I'm still I'm still in the company, right? right. Mm -hmm. But and, and so we're actually trying to figure that out. So what at, at what point is you know the company pays for some of the plan now, mm -hmm. but it's but it's really expensive, right? So at what point is the percentage that we're paying of that plan? 
more expensive than figuring out right. all of this stuff through Medicare. Right? right, and that's why we tell people if you come in three months ahead of time, um, you know, make sure you talk to your human resources department to yeah. see if you have any type of retirement health insurance, and if so, what's the cost going to be to you? So when they come in, then we can say, okay, you know, you're you're fine. Your group health, your retiree insurance is going to cover you. Yeah. You know, you have a drug plan, you're good. But then you have other people who say, no, my company doesn't have any retirement group health insurance. So you have to really start from the beginning. Like, you know, you have to apply for your Medicare A and B. Um, it doesn't just come to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You have, and before you can apply for a supplement health insurance, you have to have your Medicare card. And sometimes that can take three to four weeks before you'll get your card. So we tell them, you know, apply for that right away. Um, and then you can take your time determining what extra insurance you want, what drug plans you want. You can, it'll give you a little leeway. Um, but don't come in the day you turn 65 and want to sign up for everything. <laughs> right, right. And both so, Sue and Pauline see couples together because, of yes. course, it's, it's an important mm -hmm. decision. You don't take them both. into separate rooms and kind of. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> Togetherness. <laughs> Until they find out their health insurance plans are not necessarily <laughs> together. That's right. That's right. And then they're getting mad. So you do couples counseling? At the end of these, at the end of these, that's great. There's that's only great. so much training, right? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> But you have, right, you have to have a person who's got the right disposition Absolutely. kind of going Absolutely, and we, we are so fortunate. You know, so, I, I, Sue and Pauline are great, but I have, a, as you know, great volunteers. I have great staff, and so right. that's what we're always trying to welcome people into the senior center for these kind of resources. And, just, just for this kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. So now can we talk a little bit about C, about Medicare Advantage? Mm -hmm. Because I think that is the most, for many people, the most baffling thing. I, and I just read this, I read this statistics, oh, last week in the Times. Mm -hmm. They said that nationally, the number of people who have gone to Medicare Advantage plan over the last 10 years has moved from something like less than 20% of everybody to like over 30% of everybody. Mm -hmm. So the shift from standard Medicare A and Medicare B into Medicare Advantage is like really significant, you know? But, but people, first of all, often don't have no idea how any of this works, mm -hmm. and then have no idea of any differentiations among those Medicare, what I would think of as Medicare C plans, it's mm -hmm. Medicare C, the right. Advantage plans. Can you just talk about that a little bit, about, about kind of, first of all, mm -hmm. how it works. You, as you had mentioned, you talked about it's really kind of like an HMO. So how does it work? What is, an, it, what is a kind of the essence of a Medicare C plan? And if you could just talk a little bit about, from your own perspective, what are some of the differences people might be looking for among those plans? Because as opposed to Medicare A and B, right. and, I, and I know from my limited knowledge, right, that, that, they, that one of the requirements of, Medi of the Advantage plans is they have to at least deliver all the Medicare A and Medicare B things, right? Right. But, but then there are other things. Right. So can you just kind of talk about that? Sure. Um, a Medicare Advantage plan, when we talk to people about that, the one thing we stress is that before you pick a plan, you need to contact your doctors and be sure that they accept these plans. The plan, because you have, as opposed to Medicare A and B, which everybody has to be, doctors have to take those. Right, right, right. But the advantage plans in C is to pick up the difference from what A and B doesn't pick up. So you need to really make sure your doctors are gonna accept whatever plan you pick, whether it's Tufts or Blue Cross or um, AARP. Um, each medical practice will usually take one or two. Some mm -hmm. of them will only take Tufts, some of them will take, say, Tufts and Blue Cross. Oh. So you need to make sure as, that your doctors are in one of these plans that you're thinking about taking. Um, they're, because they're subsidized, their premiums go from zero up to $200 a month. Because they're subsidized. They're subsidized by Medicare. They're not a private insurance company. They're supplemented by Medicare. I see. So they can offer Well, lower that makes sense because Medicare is basically paying them right. what they were going to be using to take care of your, your care. Right. Medicare is now paying an amount to these companies to do it. Right. So it's a subsidized program. They're HMO plans. So the difference is um, you need to get referrals if you go outside of your network. Um, if you travel to Florida for the winter, 
an Advantage plan is not going to be your best friend. Because it doesn't travel with you. It doesn't travel with you. I see. Um, if I you're see. out of town for a couple of weeks and you have an emergency, yes, it does cover you for emergencies. But if you get the flu or a bad cold, it does not cover you for that. Um, and if you say you were in Florida and you had a heart attack, yes, as an emergency services, your HMO or your Medicare Advantage plan will cover you. But when you get out of the hospital and need rehab or physical therapy or need to continue with a doctor, not, that's not covered. So I tell people if you're going to do a lot of travel, um, if you think you're going to spend some months in Florida or California or yeah. any place, you need to be very careful to think about what type of a plan you want to get. Those type of people who travel a lot or who are going to be gone for two or three months, I would tell them that you should look at a Medigap plan. Now these are privately private insurance companies, so there's no funding from right, Medicare right. on these, and they are more expensive. And they also need a supplement drug plan, where your Advantage plans, most of them include a drug plan. Because the Medigap plan, oh, this is once again my limited, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the, way, the way I've led, led to believe that, I, class, I always think about Medicare B, that Medicare B, as opposed to the hospital Medicare A, which is the, the, the hospital, yes. Medicare B typically is going to say, look at your doctor's bill and say, mm -hmm. well, for that service, not what is your doctor's bill, but what's the ordinary and reasonable amount that would normally be paid for that service, mm -hmm. and that's usually less. And then we're going to pay 80% of that, Correct. right? And you're going to pay 20%. And the Medigap, it's my understanding, basically you're buying the insurance to pay the 20%. That's correct. Which is going to cover that yes, piece. Yes, it's going to cover that. So it's really kind of a, it's really built into the A and mm -hmm. B system, as opposed to having anything to do with C, you know? It's right. This, it has, yeah. um, the Medigap plans have the flexibility because they'll cover you if you go out of state. They'll cover you for, um, you know, if you spend three or four months in Florida, you, your insurance will cover you down there. Right. If you do foreign travel, your we'll Medigap plan will cover it. Um, you don't have to have referrals. You can go to any doctor, any hospital. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people like that flexibility. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people like the Medicare Advantage plans, if they're on a limited income, um, the monthly premiums can be very little. And if they don't go to the doctor very, very often, more than once or twice a year, paying a $20 copayment isn't that big of a problem for them. So they, you know, prefer to use something like that. They don't mind getting referrals. Uh, so I guess so that was gonna to go to the next mm -hmm. question. So if I'm, a, if I'm a consumer, and once again, I'm trying to figure this out. And, sure. and, and by the way, it, can you change any time in and out from your regular Medicare A and B to a Medicare C or a, or a Medicare Advantage plan? Or is that, or, or can you, mm -hmm. let me put it this way, during an enrollment period every year, can you move from one to the other? During the open enrollment period, you can change yeah. your uh, subsidy medical plan. You yeah. can change from Medicare Advantage to a Medigap plan. I you see. can drop them. You can change your drug plan. You can only change your Medicare Advantage plan once a year between October 15th and December 7th. So once again, it's like right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a consumer, why would I think of doing a Medicare? I can I understand there are some good reasons not to, mm -hmm. like, like from what you've just explained. You know, if you're traveling, ooh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really dangerous. You know, and by by doing one of these plans, I'm more limited because you've you've told me I can may, maybe my doctor will take medic, right? But maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. So so why would I want to do it? Why? Would, it's usually it's cost. It's a cost benefit. It's a cost, mm -hmm. but I don't usually pay much for in med, for medic. For, in Medicare? Well, you pay um, deductibles. There's a deductible if you were in the hospital. Um, it's around $1,800. Yeah. If your deductible for B is $183. So those are upfront expenses that you would have to think about paying. Hey, yeah. um, you could have a Medicare Advantage plan that you only pay zero per month for, so there's no cost As to you. As opposed to Medicare where there's that automatic deduction. Right. I right. see. So and that could be, some, and that's a monthly charge, the Medi that Medicare. Yes, it is. It's so just, that could be a couple thousand a, dollars. It could right. be. Um, some of the you know, Medigap plans are close to $200 a month. Yeah. So yeah. the Gap plans give you freedom, but they're private, so you're going to pay more for them. Mm -hmm. And some people feel it's just too expensive. Um, others, they want they want the flexibility of going to any doctor in any hospital. Um, 
and certainly with an HMO through the Medicare Advantage plan, you can see other doctors, but you have to go through the referral you process. You have to go through the referral. Mm -hmm. Now, from your experience, because once again, you're not being paid by anybody, so you can right. talk freely here. <laughs> from, your, from your experience among those Medicare Advantage plans, from the folks that you deal with, did there, mm. you said there were a bunch that are out there. Yes. Do you tend? Do you see that there are uh, most people use one or two who are around here? And from your experience, I, I, is it? Are the, is there a plan that really looks better than others, or are there plans that really look better than others? Well, I think that's really an individual. Um, con, you know, each individual person might say, "I've had Tufts all my life." I want to continue oh, with Tufts. I, I have I Blue Cross Blue Shield. Mm -hmm. I want to stay with Blue Cross Blue Shield. And they must all have these, right? They must yes, all have these. yes, they do. And Tufts, um, their Medicare Advantage plans are a five-star rating. That's the highest rating you can get in the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. They have it, and Blue Cross Blue Shield has it this year. So we always tell them that these are the these are the best-rated plans. Um, they might have seven different types of subplans that you could look at. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them you have a zero per month copayment, but when you go to the doctors, you pay twenty-five dollars. If you paid seventy-nine dollars a month for your Medicare Advantage plan, you'd pay ten dollars when you went to the thing. So it's really a money angle, um, and what people feel they're comfortable with yeah. in paying. And when and if folks come to the to you to talk to you about these plans, mm -hmm. are you doing some of those numbers for them? Cause, we try because to, so often that's right. right. It, this is a great way to understand it, mm -hmm. that it's, mm -hmm. this, this is about the dollars. Right. right. I often talk to clients about, you know, when they're thinking about mass health and other things, I say, you know, this is about the math. You know, right. we talk about the theory about this, but this ultimately somebody's got to do the math. Mm -hmm. Right. And find somebody to do the math mm -hmm. that you trust. Right. right. And we try to, I try to talk to them and say like, you know, do you go to the doctors every month? Are you healthy and you only go once or twice a year? Yeah. Um, do you have physical therapy? I mean, is there, are there, because each one of these things are gonna cost you money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I try to go through and show them like, you know, if you need lab work, um, you're gonna pay 20% of the cost, or you're gonna pay $25, or if you're gonna see a specialist, it could be $40. So if you see a cardiologist two or three times a month, or twice a month, every month, Let's look at plans where the cardiologist, which would, you know, not be your primary care physician, it's going to, you know, be outside of that. Let's see what we can find that might be better for you. That's really interesting. So it's, and it's another one of those reasons why you got to relook at it every year because Absolutely. it isn't, mm -hmm. now that you're explaining it, it isn't just about doing the math, it's about your situation may have changed. Right. And you, you actually have this ability, no matter what your situation is, to drop in and out of these to move. Right. You right. can move from advantage to straight A and B once a year, depending on your situation. Right, you yeah. can always stay with just A and B, but then you're going to pick up the cost of um, right. the 20%. Right. Uh, and I just try to tell people, think what would happen if you were in the hospital for three or four days. That's tens of thousands of dollars, and you're going to be responsible for 20% of that. So. Hopefully you'll never be in the hospital, mm -hmm. but you know if something happens and that's why they call it insurance, right? right? Because you don't know. You, don't you know, know, it's there in case. It's yeah. not. Hopefully you won't have to use it, but right. if you do, and you have money put aside for something like this, and you're comfortable with that, that's that's great. This is the plan for you. But we never tell anybody what plan they should take. We try to give them as much information as we can. And sometimes I'll say to them, you know what? Take all of this away. Think about, it, think about it and then come back right. mm -hmm. and we can we right. can sign you up for whatever you need to sign up because sometimes it is overwhelming it's a lot to try to absorb it's a lot it's and a as lot. you say the takeaway is thank god we've got sue yes absolutely and, and, and her and partner S sue and, and pauline and, mm -hmm. and and that and that you can come in and it's mm -hmm. free, right? It's right. confidential. To to, and it's confidential, mm -hmm. right? Right, yes. And you can even stay for lunch because you got a great idea. You got a great lunch. Yeah, you got a great lunch program. <laughs> yes. And you can figure it out. And and the fact that you're on one track now, I think that's the other big takeaway, it does not mean you need to stay on that track or that that's even sensible because your condition may have changed. Mm -hmm. Right. And the drug your drugs may have changed, mm -hmm. your needs for physical, these other things. 
And it's all about every year doing the math over, right. which is just a wonderful thing to, to know right. and to know that you don't have to do the math yourself. Right. For us, right. you know, so lawyers, many lawyers became lawyers because they couldn't do the math. Right? <laughs> you know, they, that was, you no. Know, when my son tries to talk science with me, I go, no, Joe, that's why I became a lawyer, you yeah. know. So, so it's really, really handy. Right. This is really great. It so, is great. And, mm -hmm. and we, you know, we've heard all the great things that Sue can cover. And then we have another resource as well, and that's the Mass College of Pharmacy right in our backyard. Yes. And they're a wonderful resource for the Part D. So mm -hmm. as Sue was saying, you might be happy with your health plan and not right. want to change A and B or you any don't of have those to change things. right. Right. But you may want to look at your formulary, at the drugs, at right. your prescriptions to make sure that your health plan hasn't changed anything or your drug plan right. hasn't changed. I was gonna say so, especially because they could just change it on you. What you thought exactly. was the right drug plan you this need year. That check up every year. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's right. almost like a, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a money checkup every year to right. make sure that the system is right. Right. And Paula Evans is the director of outreach for Mass College of Pharmacy. So yeah. we have mm -hmm. students from there that are gonna become pharmacists or physicians assistants. They come with the faculty. They're coming to the Northboro Senior Center on November 6th, 5.30 to 7.30. This is an ad. Well, this, this is, is going to be on there. It. November mm -hmm. 6th, 5.30 to 7.30, <laughs> right? Um, for those folks that are happy with their health plan, but they yep. need that checkup on their Part right. D, this right. is a great opportunity to do that. These, um, Mass College of Pharmacy did 1,200 of these last year. So, wow. um, that you know, wow. they've been doing it for years and they're experts in this. That's um, great. Pauline O'Bray, our other Shine counselor, will be in the room if... Um, a health plan question comes up during that time, but I really do encourage people to call the Senior Center 508-393-5035 and sign yeah. up yeah. for um, Part D with the Mass College of Pharmacy on November 6th. That's great. Right, That's a, it's such a great program and they have uh, so much knowledge about um, people who take really expensive drugs, um, yeah. cancer drugs, right. hot, uh, hot conditions, uh, they can help them try to find either some type of a grant to help them to pay for their drugs or uh, even coupons from the manufacturer that'll help defray some of the costs and that they're great. That's a big at, deal. Mass College of Pharmacy deal. is one of the great hidden gems of Central yes, Massachusetts. Yes it is. Yes, you know, it what they really give to is. this area and it's part of their mission. It's part yeah, of their mission. And they've, so, they've done that, but I'm so. watching my clock and I'm saying we well, gotta, <laughs> we, I think we're done. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're entirely this was welcome. great. Thank Thanks for suggesting yes, this. Was, this was terrific. I'm very happy that Sue could join us. And, <laughs> and next and next month, I think we're going to try to talk to your outreach person because we're going to talk to jo Jocelyn. So thank you so much. Yes. You're entirely welcome. Thank and you. And thank you for watching. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary in Northboro. Thank you so much. <laughs>